All right, everyone, welcome back. So this week we're going to take a look at a rather interesting Hollywood style effect that I was playing with uh, the other day. Came out really cool, and it's using um, just a few different images. In fact, I'm going to go and show you what we're uh, going to be playing with here. I've got an image of this uh, menacing looking guy here, and I've got a simple texture file right here. And also I have this file with this uh, cool uh, lines of code and everything and uh, kind of fading in the background. So those are the three images we're going to build this, this design on. So let's go ahead and minimize these two guys and concentrate on this image here. Now what I like about this image is the overall shape we're looking at uh, in contrast to the black background. It's got kind of a nice oval uh, kind of um, shape to it. And there's a lot of uh, graphic elements going on in here with the various numbers and some of them are blurred. It's just it's giving me a good shape and it's uh, giving me um, exactly what I'm looking for. So. We're going to take this and bring it into the actual file we're going to build the design in, which is this file right over here, which I've gone ahead and created. But just so you can see, uh, well, there's the dimensions right here on the image size menu. It's uh, 8 by 12 inches at 100 pixels per inch. Again, working in pretty low res uh, for just for demonstration reasons. Of course, if you are doing this at full scale and going to be printing it very large, make sure you have a higher resolution for that. So. The file is created. I've gone ahead and made the background black to build the design on. So we're going to go ahead and take this file here and just drag and drop it over to this working file. And if you add the shift key, it will just drop it in the center just like that. So we're going to minimize that file. I'm just going to zoom out here. And what I want to do is rotate this graphic on this element here. So I'm going to go ahead and press uh, command or control T and that puts the object in free transform mode here. I'm just going to hold down the shift key and just rotate it around until it's 90 degrees, just like that. Now, also while I'm in free transform, we're going to go and scale it a little bit. If you um, hold down the shift key and the option key on the Mac, that would be shift alt on Windows. And we'll just grab a corner handle and just scale this proportionately to the center. That's what the option key does and the shift key keeps the proportions. And then we'll just take it and slide it over so it's a little bit more on the side like that and just press enter once it is in place. All right. So there's our graphic element in place. Well, let's go ahead and bring in the other file that we're going to composite this with, which is this uh, menacing looking guy here. He doesn't look like he's having a very good day. So he will be our villain. So with this uh, image, we're just gonna again, take it and drag and drop it over to this working document. And it comes in uh, automatically on its own layer. I'm just gonna go ahead and scale it up just a little bit here. And it also position it roughly in the position of where I place that graphic. Now what I want to do is I want to mask this image of the guy with the shape or this uh, graphic of these numbers in this file here. So basically what I want to do is use the luminosity of this layer to mask this layer here because it fades to black. I just want the lighted areas. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, have this uh, layer turned off for the moment. Let's go to the channels and we're going to go in here and toggle through each of the individual channels and see which one bears the most contrast that we want to use. And in fact, I think it's going to be the green channel right here. It looks pretty good. So in, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, let's go ahead and bring the channels palette out here so, so you can see. I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate of this green channel by simply dragging it down here to the new icon and then we get green copy. Now. I'm not going to do anything to this. In fact, uh, the only thing I may do is just uh, notice the edge over here. The left edge has a, a hard edge to it. So I'm just going to use the gradient tool real quick. And going foreground to transparent, let's set the foreground color to black. And I'm just going to fade this in from that side. And that looks pretty good. Probably even come in and fade in from the other side, just a hair. Just like that. Okay. So now this is an alpha channel, which is basically a stored selection. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and load this as an active selection. So let's go back to our layers. Back in our layers panel. And inside here, I'm going to go ahead and reactivate this layer containing this guy here and make sure that we have that layer highlighted in the layers panel. And then we're going to go into the select menu and go down here to the load selection. And then we're going to choose poster finished. And we want to choose the green copy uh, channel that we just created. So green copy, new selection, and click OK, and there it is, active selection on that layer. We'll simply click on the layer mask icon here at the bottom of the layers panel, this third icon over, and it will mask the image 
inside of that shape. Now, let's go ahead and take that layer and drag it down one. We'll turn this layer off for the moment. So we can see the graphic through that mask. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and select the layer mask itself. Notice on the layer, you can select the layer of the layer mask. With the layer mask itself selected, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a levels adjustment. So we'll go to image adjustment and choose levels and just brighten up the contrast of that mask so we can see a little bit more of that guy. There we go. So I'm just moving that mid-tone slider a little bit just to lighten up the mask. And I think that looks pretty good. Now, back to that layer up here that contains the original graphic. I'm gonna go over here and just go ahead and take out the color on this layer because we used it to create the channel but we're also gonna use the layer itself to add to the effect. So I'm gonna go under the image adjustments and go down here and choose desaturate. Now, it should be still lined up with the mask. We didn't move the mask uh, from earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the blend mode of this layer from normal to screen and it should enhance that coloring just a little bit. There we go. So it's brightening it up, uh, maybe even, even a little too much in some areas. So I'm going to again put a levels adjustment on this layer. So we'll go to adjustment and choose levels and darken this up. And that'll make some of the other areas of type a little bit brighter, especially right there in the middle there. Notice if I turn the layer on and off, it's really brightened up that center line of text there, really adding to the effect. Now I want to reposition this guy in relation to the graphic. But notice in here, if I go over and select that layer and move it, the graphic moves with him because the layer mask is linked to that layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off, or rather just click on that chain link and that unlinks the layer to the layer mask. So now I can freely move the layer around to a different position if I want. Now, a couple more elements to add. I'm gonna go ahead and add another element here of this graphic. This uh, graphic we use to make the layer mask. I'm going to go ahead and hold down the command key on Mac, control on Windows, and notice the cursor changes right over the layer mask. If I click on it, it loads that alpha, that alpha channel that's being used as a layer mask as a selection. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer and fill that selection with white on that new layer. Now don't deselect it yet. Once you fill that selection with white on that new blank layer, you're going to go into the select menu and go to inverse. And now the uh, selection has flipped around to the outside area or the non-selected area. And just we're gonna press delete uh, about two or three times. And then we'll just go ahead and deselect and just press command D. Now by deleting that outside area, you've ended up with a kind of a faded graphic here, which we're gonna position off to the side here. And I'm even going to scale it up just a little bit. And that's gonna add to the whole code aspect of this design. Now it seems a little too intense, so I'm just gonna drop the opacity of that layer to around 40%, something like that. There we go. All right, so we're looking pretty good. Now, one thing, final thing to do is to add a color effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the topmost layer in this layer order and we're gonna put a hue saturation adjustment layer in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and check on color eyes and there's no guessing what color I'm gonna go for here. We're, just gonna, we're gonna set this at around 221 to get a nice blue color and then the saturation at around 40 so it looks really nice and bright there. And that looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna reposition this guy just a little bit there. There we go. Okay, one final element. Remember that uh, picture of that texture? We're going to go ahead and take that and drag it on over in the document here. And I'm going to go ahead and put a layer mask on this graphic. And I am positioning it. Make sure it's positioned under that uh, adjustment layer. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and put it way underneath the guy there. And I'm going to hold down the Option key on Mac, Alt on Windows. As I click the layer mask icon, it's going to add a hide all layer mask, which will hide the entire graphic. And then we're going to paint it back in via a gradient. So I'm gonna go over here in the toolbar and select the gradient tool. And again, using the same gradient I was earlier, we're gonna use foreground to transparent, but I'm gonna set the foreground color to white, but drop the opacity of it. Up here in the options bar, we're gonna drop the opacity of the gradient tool to 50%. And then I'm just gonna go in here and use, oh, well, let's go ahead and use a uh, radial gradient, that'll be fine. And then just bring in certain areas where that texture is to enhance the effect a little bit more. 
And there we have very cool Hollywood effect. Now, one final touch for this is a text element I have that I'm actually going to put way at the top of the layer, layer order here and put right there. And we'll just give this the fictional title that uh, we're, we're calling it, this HTX 100. So I'm going to actually put a little bit of a glow on this graphic. So we'll just go into the layer styles here. And let's add an outer glow and really give it kind of a really kind of a hot orange color here. We'll do hard light and we'll just increase the size a little bit there. But I want to add even more to this glow. I want it to actually kind of casting light on the side of the, this guy right here. So we're going to activate drop shadow and it's going to act as another glow for us. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the distance down to zero. And let's go ahead and change the color. We're going to make the color more of a yellow. And then we're going to make that blend mode, in this case, it was set to multiply. We're going to, now we're going to change it to linear light. And let's really increase the size. And you'll see that glow really start to get pretty big. And there we go. We've got a little bit of a glow kind of coming out there. And I can uh, play around with that. But there we have really cool Hollywood effect using that one file of the different code, but using it in a very interesting way of making a mask out of it to kind of hide our villain in our movie and just have a kind of a cool graphic effect going on. And notice how that texture is really helping with to, ba to balance it out. So it's just not creepy dark in the background. There's actually some element of a texture back there just to give it a little bit more balance.